name is Adam Braidwood. I was born on June 1st, 1984, in Richmond, British Columbia. This talk is about my life and the things that I've been through, the adversity that I've faced, times where I've been up and times that I've been down, the mistakes that I've made, and how I, how I crawled out of what was to be my own grave and tried to make something of myself, something I could be proud of. I was a determined little boy. I think some of that I was just born with, and some of that has to do with things that happened to me. As far back as I can remember, I wanted to be a professional football player. I'd point to magazines like Sports Illustrated when I was walking in the grocery store with my mom and say, that's me, mom. That's who I am. I started playing football when I was seven years old. I found my passion, what I was meant to do, something that was going to take me somewhere. That's where I was going, somewhere. Sometimes I would practice two times a day, have three games a week. All the while, I'd head to the gym in between, desperately trying to get better. I'd eat healthy, I'd keep protein shakes in my locker. If I broke a bone or sprained an ankle, I'd just tape it tighter and keep going. This attitude got me some achievements athletically. I was selected to, to Team BC. Uh, I was Team BC defensive MVP. I was offered a full scholarship to Washington State University in grade 11. I was selected to the all Pac-10 freshman team. I won a Pac-10 championship, played in a Rose Bowl, won a Holiday Bowl. And in 2006, I was selected first overall in the CFL draft to the Edmonton Eskimos. I had my sights set on getting into the NFL. I was a football player. It was everything. It taught me about life. My coaches were my parents, my teammates, my brothers. Problem is, though, the surrogate family will let you down. This happened when I got hurt. In 20 years, I don't even remember missing a practice, let alone a game. Now I've missed two seasons with surgery after surgery. I was stuck on my couch, barely able to walk, more than a few steps. I was a star football player, and now I was nothing. I felt empty. I had nothing. I had nothing sustaining me, so drugs filled that void. The sinking feeling I had in my heart when I was alone with my demons all day. I had no options in my mind on how to sustain my drug habits, so I turned to crime and violence. It was one step after the other down a dark road where things got increasingly violent and dangerous. One thing leads to another, and before you know it, you're slamming a bottle of pills to get out of bed and packing around a 9mm and wearing a bulletproof vest. Crime gave me purpose, a reason to get out of bed every day. And it, fed, and it fed that insurmountable craving for painkillers I thought I needed. These choices I made led me to that faithful day in 2010 when during a drug collection, I hit a man with a machete, beat him up, stuffed him into a trunk of a car. The police found us shortly soon thereafter on a clandestine stretch of highway leading to nowhere. Luckily, we all walked away that day. I was uh, released on bail a few times. I screwed up twice. I was uh, rearrested with multiple gun charges, domestic violence, and drug trafficking. I'd done every low life thing you could do, and I decided to end it all by taking a handful of pills, playing Russian roulette. Luckily, the gun did not fire. I played actually several times. Uh, of course, it made national newspapers. This was during the Grey Cup, mind you. I was still playing football at this time. I managed to come back and play one more season before all this happened. During my fall from grace, headlines grazed the newspapers such as Hero to Monster. I lost everything. I lost my car, my house, my job, my health, my freedom, all of my money, my reputation, my dream. Everything was gone. But most of all, I hurt the people that I love. I'm not going to lie. I thought, that, I thought during the time my life was over. I stopped caring whether I lived or died. I locked away in a jail cell, ruined. I lay on a concrete floor, and like a scene out of the movie Train Spotting, I kicked opiate painkillers. I can't properly describe the misery I went through over those three weeks. Everything aches, you can't hold down food or water, you're always cold and sweaty, you can't sleep, you have racing anxiety thoughts all day, but slowly I got my strength back doing push-ups, shadow boxing, pacing around, back and forth in my cell. It was at that time I made the decision that this wouldn't kill me. 
that this wasn't the end. I keep fighting because that's what I do. I'm a fighter. I'll get through this. That's what I do. I get through things. I'll eat healthy, I'll exercise, I'll work hard, I'll coach, I'll give back to the community, I'll be better to my family. I went to treatment, I got counseling, I got back in the gym, I needed to get better. I, sat, I used to sit in my four by seven room in the halfway house that doubled as a homeless shelter, a place where you might walk by a bathroom and see a dead body laying on the bathroom floor. And that happened, that happened, I saw it. A victim of a drug overdose. I'd sit there and I'd listen to motivational videos on YouTube. I'd say to myself, no matter what happens, just show up every day, just go, just keep showing up. Take the bus, go dig holes, pack material, dispose of hazardous waste, it doesn't matter. You go every day, you do your best, then after all that, you go to the gym and train as hard as you can because that's what you do. That's the only way out of this. No one's coming to save you, and even if there was, you don't deserve it. So that determination was tested. <laughs> Five minutes onto my first day, a job site as a carpenter. <laughs> uh, my boss goes, where's your tools? I said, I don't got any tools, man. I just took the bus here. I got to do this. I'm on parole. He handed me a crowbar and said, peel off that piece of cedar. You're going to strip all these decks. I was like, all right. This is literally five minutes. It's 7.05 a.m. <laughs> Wasp nest lands right in front of me. I'm four stories up on scaffolding. I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> so I start like trying to scramble down and they just swarm me. They're stuck in my beard, in my <laughs> ear, in my nose, in my pants, everywhere. I got stung about 50 times, they thought, and I'm running down the scaffolding. It's seven in the morning, there's people living there. I'm yelling and I'm cursing. I'm like, ah, I'm ripping my shirt off and I'm just losing my mind. And they're like, man, you got to go to the hospital. You're all right. And I think I hit another bee's nest on the way. And I was just getting attacked. Like, because I walked by the same bee's nest trying to figure out the scaffolding. Never been up on scaffolding. And, uh, and I sat there and they're like, you got to go. You got to go to the hospital. You're swelling up. You got to go home. I got knots all over my head. I was like, no, man, if I leave, if I leave now, I'll never come back. Day one. So I walked around that scaffolding. I stripped those decks. I was a little bit dizzy from all the poison. I was sweating. <laughs> but... Uh, you know, I stayed, I worked a full day. Sure enough, I went home, I ate my food. I went to the gym that night, I was getting punched in the head and I was like, wow, this feels really cool with bee stings all over my head. <laughs> but I did it and I sweated out and I went again the next day and I did that, you know. Uh, I made this mess for myself and I did the best to pay what I owed. And within two years of my release, I won a world title in boxing, all the while living in that same halfway house. That was February of this year. The only reason I won that fight, I was greatly overmatched in, received a three inch cut over my eye, was that I wouldn't quit. Round after round, I just kept showing up. I won a fight. I won that fight. I was great, greatly favored to lose in. Something told me I had to win. I need to do this. I used all the hard lessons I learned through addiction, rehab, jail, prison, hell. I just never quit. Move forward, grow, get out of your comfort zone. Because if you set your mind to it and show up every day and give your everything you got, and I'm not talking like the bee stings, I'm talking about getting your teeth knocked out by rebar and concrete and picking that up, and stuffing it in your pocket and going on, because I know what that's like too. That kind of determination. You have to keep moving forward, no excuses. Just trust me, I know. I had to get out of my comfort zone a lot. I needed to grow as a person. I needed to see value in things such as community and public service, things that I ignored until now, things I ignored because I never needed those things until now. I had set goals for myself, and not just athletically, but much more importantly in life. So there's your storybook ending, right? Told you my journey, how I rocketed up, unstoppable, struck down, lower than I could have ever imagined, and then through hard work, fought my way to the top again. I've redeemed myself, right? I should be on my way to greater things. Wrong. 
This is no movie. I'm no hero. I didn't win and ride off into the sunset. No, I fought again. That's what I do. That's how I sustain my life. This is what saves me from going back to my evil ways. This is who I am. I'm a pro boxer. I'm a fighter. That's all I know how to do. It's how I live. It's how I eat. And on June 16th, 2017, I killed my friend in the boxing rig. <laughs> There's a fight in Edmonton. I threw a right hand, left hook at the beginning of the second round, and I killed Tim Haig. He hit the canvas, brain dead and unresponsive. I took away a boy's father, a brother, a husband, a son, and I took him away on Father's Day. There's nothing I can do to bring him back. I can't go back on anything I've done. The mistakes that I've made, I will live with for the rest of my life. What I can do is not slide back into my old self. To do the best, to keep fighting, to learn, to share my experience with others, to try to gain wisdom from it, and show there is a way to survive. There is a way to move forward. You can gain strength and never give up. To overcome everything and anything you go through. Try to leave people better off than when you found them. So on that note, I fight again here in Victoria, September 8th. Because that's what I do. That's who I am. I'm a fighter. I like to believe I can do it better this time. I have new insights on myself. The steps that I took forward to change how I live, how I treat people. I find strength in knowing I can ask for help and knowing I can be forgiven and in knowing I'm strong enough to pull myself out of anything. Life's a journey that goes round and round with many peaks, many valleys, and the only thing you can count on is change. And it's how you respond to that change, reinventing yourself however you have to, what's important. <laughs>